Hi there, it's Tessa. In this video, I'm going to be talking with you about how to make this color wheel. This is one of my favorite exercises for learning some basic color mixing. While it isn't exhaustive, like some of those mixing charts you see, um, where people mix every single color they have on their palette with each other, I think that this is a good snapshot on how to take a small, in this case, 12 color palette, actually nine colors were the only ones I used in this, and how to create a gamut of bright and desaturated colors. I'm a big proponent of learning how to color mix. I know that some people would rather just buy paints that they can use straight out of the tube or straight out of the pan. Um, I think that you're going to be spending a lot of money doing that, and also, you still might not get the colors that you're going for. I have an example here. Here's my swatch card for my 48 Paul Rubin set, which is a lot of colors. And especially when you're buying tubes or some of the higher end professional paints, this is gonna cost you hundreds of dollars to get this many colors. And still, it doesn't have everything you need. You've got a ton of bright, yellows, pinks, greens, blues, but when you get into these neutral colors, these browns and grays, you're very limited. On this, even though I only use nine colors to mix, when you get into these areas, these are just gonna be hard colors to find straight out of the tube or pan. Um, and I know that these colors by themselves look kind of muddy or icky, but these are, in my opinion, essential for getting realistic colors or interesting colors that help your bright ones pop. And a couple notes before we begin. I know that when we talk about limited color palettes, and especially, you know, this one uses a split primary palette. A lot of people use terms warm and cool when talking about different types of yellows or reds or what have you. Um, I try to stay away from that. I've noticed that a lot of people get really confused when talking about especially blues. There is really no warm blue or cool blue. Blue is just a cool color. Um, and so instead of using temperatures, I like to stick towards leans. Does a blue lean towards green or lean towards violet? I think that that's a lot more useful and it helps really map out where on this color wheel you want to find the color that you're mixing. This color wheel is also a really useful tool to keep next to your desk when you're painting. I like to use it as a color map so that when I have here, let's say this, the colors on this little piece of paper that I want to match, obviously this color wheel isn't exhaustive. It doesn't have literally every single color available, but I can take it and I can say, okay, where is this color fall closest to on the wheel? Now I can start homing in on, it's kind of in the browns that are between the yellows and the oranges. Cause when I go here, like that is way too red, but I'm getting closer as I get towards the oranges and yellows. And then I can say, well, this orange is very bright compared to this desaturated brownish color. And so if I want to go desaturated, I go more towards the middle then. And then I look at these colors. These are actually quite close. So already I can say, well, this color right here lies somewhere in this range of the color wheel and then I can look at the colors that I actually have um, you know and here I just put the numbers that correlate to my palette because I don't have the color names for these paints um, but I can look at the colors that are used to mix around here and get something that's very very close to this color so and I can do that for everything it's helpful to have it in your hand in front of you but as you get more practiced with color mixing you can take something that's a photo on your phone and you can 
learn where to mix those colors and how to get something that approximates what you're trying to get. I have the swatch card for these paints that I'll be using and with the corresponding number, I guess I have it like this on my palette right now, with the corresponding number and those are the numbers that I use as my notes when I'm um, painting this outside ring of colors. And again, I tend to stay away from the terms cool and warm, but you'll hear me use different terms for these colors throughout the video. And uh, for the people in my class, throughout the class, I'll be using these terms to describe these colors. I would call this a primary yellow. I might call it a greenish yellow when talking in relation to this other one. This I would consider my yellow orange, orangish yellow, gold. This is my orangish red, scarlet. I would consider this pink, rose, purplish red, violet or purple. This would be my purple leaning blue or my ultramarine. This would be my green leaning blue or thalo blue. This I would use thalo green, blue leaning green. Sometimes I would call this a sap green or a yellow green. And then while these aren't in the video of the color mixing wheel, yellow ochre, burnt sienna, Payne's gray. And with all that out of the way, let's get into the video where I actually set up this color wheel and I will use a voiceover to explain what I'm doing. So I start by tracing a circle. You can obviously do this freehand, but I'm fussy. And then once I have my big circle, I'm going to lay out 12 different circles within using a straight edge just to mark the halfway points and make sure that each side is symmetrical to each other. Once I have my 12 points laid out on the big circle, I'm taking, I'm making larger circles or my largest spots along this, let's say clock at 12 o'clock, four o'clock and eight o'clock. Those will be my primary colors. So the medium sized circles will go at two o'clock, six o'clock and 10 o'clock. And those are going to be my secondary um, orange, green and violet. And once I have that set up, first I mark out my red, yellow, and blue primary. And then I label the orange, green, and violet. You can mark out the tertiary colors like the red, orange, yellow, orange, etc. But I, I felt that that was unnecessary. I also marked the black. So for my red, I wanted to find the purest fire engine red. And you are going to notice this isn't something where I pick three primary colors and then mix everything from those three primaries. What I'm doing is I'm filling out the outside of this wheel with whatever I think is the purest representation of the color. And now I didn't have an orange, and so I ended up mixing my orange yellow with the red I already had out on the palette. I didn't mix the yellow that I used in my primary spot. I used the one that I thought would make the purest orange. Now for these tertiary colors, 
I just mixed the one that I already had in with a little more red or a little more yellow. You see me using a swatch card here. I'm trying to get a red orange that is perfectly in between the orange and the red. Now, you'll see as I go on, this isn't perfect. Some of my colors end up being a lot more um, leaning towards one than the other, but it is a good habit to use a little swatch sheet or a little piece of scrap paper on the side to make sure that the color you're putting on your painting is the color that you wanted. And you see, after I do every single, after each color that I put down on the paper, I write the number, the corresponding number on my palette. This is honestly crucial. I know when I've taught classes in the past, people will mix the color that they love the most and then maybe they get distracted and or they are mixing other colors and then by the time they want to get back to that initial color they mixed they've forgotten what they used and so take the time either write down just the number or write down the name of the paint that you're using it will save you a lot of headache Straight from the palette, I felt that my phthalo blue or my greenish blue was the perfect primary color to use. And even though I had a mix of two greens to fill in my green spot on the wheel, I used just my phthalo green or my blue leaning green to mix in with that blue to get the tertiary color. Here I feel like I should have just mixed a violet, the one that's on my palette was ended up being not as bright as I could have made had I just mixed that um, rose pink color with my ultramarine blue. I think that would have gotten a more pure purple. Here's another reason I don't like doing those immaculate tiny little mixing charts with every possible mixture of every possible color. I am even on just doing 12 colors, I am wiping off my palette so many times. And so I feel like these sort of mixer set, mixing exercises tend to use more paint that you're just wiping away or rinsing down the drain. So that's another reason I don't like doing completely exhaustive color mixing charts. You see, instead of me using the red that I used on the red spot of the wheel to mix in with that violet, I am using the more purple leaning red rose color on my palette. Now you can see me kind of tracing across the wheel to find the complement to this color that I have on my palette. This is why I'm happy that I had those numbers notated so that I could quickly just go back and mix that um, yellowish green. Now you can see here when I mix these two colors that are opposite each other on that color wheel, they desaturate each other. Meaning I'm going to take that green and it's going to get a little more on the brown or gray side of things. And then as I get further towards the center of the wheel, I want to bring that green further away from green, further in towards the brown or black. And now that I'm done on the green side, I move my way over into the purple side. So this on this end, I want it to still have a little bit of that purple quality, um, but not as vibrant as what I have on the outside of the circle. And I go around the color wheel and I do this for every color, just finding its opposite on the wheel, bringing those two colors out onto my palette, and slowly adding one into the other.
This teal color was such an interesting discovery for me. That color eluded me for a long time. I couldn't understand how this bluish green color was just so hard to mix. And then by mistake one day, I ended up adding some burnt sienna into my phthalo blue. And this greenish blue color mixed with this desaturated orange made exactly the jewel tone teal that I had been looking for. And I never realized that I just had to desaturate it a little bit. So it's funny how colors that in your mind seem so bright and rich can actually be a little dull on the color wheel. So for my black, I could have just grabbed the Payne's Gray on my palette, but I did want to experiment and demonstrate mixing a blackish color just using the three uh, primary colors that I had chosen. So you see first I'm mixing kind of an orange color. I just start with the two, any two primary colors, and then I started mixing in blue. I usually like to start with my yellow in the mix because once you get a dark, if I was to make a dark purple color, sometimes you end up adding so much yellow to get it back towards neutral. So I always like to start with my lighter and warmer colors. Oh, there I am with the temperatures. And I, the color on the palette is too dark to always see. So I like to bring it over and use it on my scrap paper. And the initial color that I mixed was really, really green. And so you see me just slowly adding more red and more blue. Because when I added red, it turned into brown. So I had to add a little more blue to bring it back towards the grayish black area. And I don't think I mixed a perfect black, but this was a good experiment to see how you can mix a deep dark grayish neutral color with your three bright primaries. So that's the end of my demonstration on how to make this color wheel. I really find this helpful in mixing your own colors, and I encourage you to try it. You might not come up with something that's exactly the same as mine, and I don't think mine is perfect. We're all using different colors, and we all might choose different colors to mix to get the one that we're aiming for. So give it a try. Thank you. Have a great day. Goodbye.